Hello, my name's Lucy and today we're going to be cooking uh, Thai larb pork style rice, uh, sorry, Thai larb style pork salad with sticky rice. Uh, so as a reminder, what I do is um, I do cooking uh, without any edits uh, and that's partly because that keeps things fun for me so I don't have to spend a lot of time editing but it also means you can see exactly how long things take because uh, there's no stopping uh, to chop things up or um, and uh, coming back when uh, everything's all been nicely cut up into even pieces. Uh, instead you get to see how long uh, chopping things and mixing things and standing poking at a cooking pan takes for the meal to actually be made. Um, and yeah, uh, we're going to get on with that. Um, and uh, I've got a new tripod again. Uh, this one's a taller one, which I was going to see if it was better for looking at the uh, looking at the side and for looking actually into the uh, into the pans when they're cooking without uh, without having to lift the camera up. I don't know if that's going to work, so we're going to give this a go, see what it looks like, um, and we'll get started. And like as I've said, since this is showing you exactly how long things take and I consider getting all of the ingredients out and getting all of the equipment you need to cook out part of cooking because if you're cooking in your home um, there isn't anybody that comes and weighs things out and puts them in bowls for you and uh, gets all of your saucepans onto the side you have to do it all yourself so if you're thinking of cooking something you've got to factor in that time uh, so we'll get started um, I will say this is a Hello Fresh recipe again I've not tried this one before um, and as always, I will do a quick thing at the end of the video of sort of 30 seconds of what I thought of it after I've eaten the meal to tell you what I thought it tasted like, how filling I thought it was, whether I'd bother making it again. Um, I think I'm probably going to like it. It's got pork in it. It's got uh, ketchup, manis and soy sauce. Um, it does have mint, which is the thing I'm trying because I'm not a fan of mint in savoury foods generally, but I'm sort of, I, I, one of the things I do with HelloFresh is try to try new things. Um, this one's supposed to take 35 minutes. It will take a bit longer, I think. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, get my ingredient bag, which is uh, here. That's the convenient thing about HelloFresh. It sounds like an advert. It's not. And there are some things they do that I don't like, and I think possibly they're, they can be overpriced for what they are, but I like them. I find them convenient. Uh, so I, I do talk about that. But uh, yes, so I need uh, jasmine rice. Something's in the freezer as well, which I'm going to need to go. And I always keep the bag out because uh, the bag is useful for uh, throwing throwing things away all in one go. Right. So the things I'm going to need out of the fridge are baby gem lettuce, a cucumber, some mint, and some pork mince. They are, of course, behind everything because this is uh, my inability to keep things neat in the fridge, so pork mince, mince, cucumber, I think would be right at the back of the lettuce. I make enough space because obviously this is again a uh, meal for two people so half of this is going in a tub for tomorrow so I need to make sure that I leave enough space as I get everything out to put the tub into the fridge and that is the big noise my fridge makes uh, when you are not inside it and my cucumber when I leave the door open too long uh, my cucumber is in this bag which I need to open up because it's got a spring onion that we don't need for this recipe in there. So here we go. Right, and then I'll just double check. I always double check that I've got everything before I start. And yes, I think this is a much more awkward angle to chat to you at as I go along. Like before I'd leave it up there or on there and both of those were better. So that's not great, but uh, we'll see. So I've got the jasmine rice, baby lettuce, cucumber, it says ginger, it uh, comes as a puree, so that's fine, I've got ginger, garlic, mint, lime, salted peanuts, pork mince, Thai spice blend, yes, in a little packet, ketchup manis, I love this stuff, 
um, soy sauce and honey. And the honey's crystallised, which means one of the first things we're going to need to do is just get out a little pan of water and just basically put that in there until the honey run goes runny again. So I'm going to do that now because I don't want the honey to be too hot. And it is literally just the tiniest amount of water. Ooh, there's no good way to tilt this at the moment. But yeah, the tiniest amount of water with the bag in there. And I'll just heat it up. It doesn't even need to boil really, although it probably will, uh, because I will just leave it on the lowest possible heat until the honey goes running. So there's that. But yes, ketchup manis is is um, just. I could eat it on its own, which I don't because it's not it's not good for you to do that. But um, it's basically it's a. Uh, it's hard to find supermarkets because I had a bottle um, that went off, I threw it away, I went to buy a new one and because I was going to Tesco's, I couldn't find one in Tesco's, I found one in Sainsbury's. In Tesco's I bought a bottle of sweet soy sauce, which I think is the same thing, but I'm not sure, I haven't tasted it. So, uh, yes, there's that, but I, I do like uh, recipes that call for this, I find it very tasty. So anyway, that's all of the ingredients, now there's the getting out all of the bits the same for the cooking. So uh, the instructions go, uh, cook the rice, put the water for the rice, the ingredients for a mount um, into a saucepan with a tight lid. So I've got my, my saucepan with a lid and also my measuring, which it will be 300 mils of water. Okay. Yes, it's almost 300 mils of water for 150 grams of uh, rice, for rice that you're going to... It's going to cook the rice by the, by the steaming method, which is uh, 10 minutes of boiling, take it off the heat, leave it for 10 more minutes, uh, and then it's cooked. Oop. Um, and then, also, I've noticed this recipe, it calls you for you to prep everything, and then it says, um, cook the pork, and then make the salad, and then reheat the pork, and it's like, or... Bear with me here. You can make the salad, then cook the pork, and then eat everything. Um, and part of it is obviously that um, if you do uh, chop the salad straight away, it will start to dry out. But A, you can put it in a tub, and B, some of it's going to be in a tub till tomorrow anyway. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. And the amount of time it will dry out, it won't make much of a difference. And then also I'll make the dressing in a separate bowl because the thing about dressing is um, some salads, they do go very wilty and sticky and the Especially rocket, I don't like rocket anyway, but if you dress rocket, um, you've got sort of 10 to 15 minutes to eat it before the rocket turns into mush. Um, so I will keep the dressing and the salad separate. So I'll have a tub of salad for tomorrow, a bowl of salad for today, a dressing which I'll put half of on the salad and half of cover up for tomorrow. So I won't leave the salad dressed. But anyway, uh, the other things that I will need um, is a chopping board, trusty chopping board and uh, anti-slip mat. my knife. I'm sorry, just I'm testing the edge for sharpness. I think it's uh, doesn't need sharpening quite yet, but it will soon. Um, trim the root from the baby gym lettuce, heart lengthways, thinly slice, da -da -da -da, trim the cucumber, quarter, uh, chop in small pieces, peel and grate the ginger. Uh, the ginger's come as a puree, so we don't need to do that. Uh, pick the mint leaves. Uh, pick the mint leaves and just just pick them. Don't don't chop them. I probably will chop them. Uh, zest and half the lime, roughly chop the peanuts, peel and grate the garlic. So, the one that, yeah, the other thing is there's nowhere convenient to put this camera because if I put it there, it's in the way of the drawer. Um, and if I put it the other side, it's in the way of the oven. Um, and it, basically, so I don't know that this is work, working. But again, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. So, garlic press that I needed. Uh, I think it's been sprinkled on top, so we're going to want a tub for those. We are also going to want a tub for eating, eating them out of, and a spoon for scooping the mixing. And we want a second tub for the salad. I don't know what we're thinking about it, but we want a tub for the mince and rice, one tub for the salad. Right. Um, oil in a large frying pan on a high heat. Uh, cook the pork mince. Add the Thai spice blend, ginger, garlic, stir fry for one, two minutes. Add the ketchup manis with a splash of water, stir and simmer until glazed one minute, cover and keep warm when you make the salad. So I'm going to have this pan 
Now, I'm going to get the lid out, but I'm probably not going to massively need it. But that is if I do this cover, it's just keeping warm. But I love I'm going to plan to make the salad first. And that water's heating up. The, the honey is uh, not running yet, but you, I can see it's getting lighter. I need to get 300 ml of water in that. The other thing is for the rice, it says um, put the cold water in the rice in the saucepan with salt. Put on the lid, bring to the boil. Once boiling, turn the heat down and leave to cook. I always boil the water then put the rice in because it's, I find it really hard to tell when water started boiling so I, I find it hard to do the timing. Okay, anyway, make the dressing, mix the soy sauce, honey and juice from the lime in a bowl. Um, well there's my juicer, I'm going to want a spoon to do that mixing. And in terms of bowls, the best size bowl for that dressing is going to be one of these, which is uh, one of the many ramekins you can get from, uh, this one came with a dessert in it. I can't now remember which brand or which type of dessert, I think it was a chocolatey one, but it came like that um, supermarket and I just kept it because uh, I like having plenty of ramekins. Okay, da -da 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 for that. And... So I'm going to zest the lime on you again. To zest the lime, you use your small cheese grater and bowl. And then for eating this, I'm going to need a spoon. And again, a, uh, this type of bowl, that's the best kind of shape for it. Um, and again, the bowl will be heated up in the oven during the last part of cooking, so I'm going to put that in there. Got my face wipe, and I'm going to need juice to drink as I eat it. And the flavor of juice I put my hands on as I go in the cupboard is uh, forest fruits juice, so that would be nice. There we go. So now I need to get 150 ml of water, not sorry, 300 ml of water, um, and then I will go back over the recipe to see what all of these things in. Because I've done that in rather a rush. Too much water. Three hundred ml of water. Right, so three hundred ml goes in this saucepan. And now there's a bit later in the recipe where it says add a dash of water, so I'm going to put my dash of water in here, and I won't use I won't use all of this. This is just water, so I'm keeping ready. And I'm going to put salt into this water that I'm going to put the rice in, and then that's ready to go on the heat. Which, and it will go over this back end of the stove, and I'm going to do the main bit of cooking here, but I'm going to wait until the honey's done, which I think it is now. You can see that water's not even really boiling. It's got it's got quite hot. Um, pick up and tilt, yeah. It's got quite hot, um, but with, with little bubbles. But it's not vigorously boiling, and that's in there. And then I just need to, uh, take that home packet out. Get lots of burning fingers on the water, and then just pull the water away. which is a 20 minute job, uh, chop the various items and then to cook the pork you need to uh, cook the pork until brown for about five minutes, add the Thai spice blend ginger and garlic, cook for two more minutes, add the ketchup manis water and cook for one more minute. So above all, overall that's seven, five, 
six, seven, eight minutes, plus the amount of time it takes you to put things in the pan, which you don't always take into account, but will we'll take you 30 seconds to a minute. So that's nine or 10 minutes overall to cook the pork. Um, and the rice, as I said, is 20 minutes. And then there's making the salad, which you can make, I will make first so that then I don't have to worry about it. So what I'm probably gonna, because the rice also, it takes 20 minutes minimum, but it can sit for quite a long while without going cold. So what I'll do is I'll start boiling the water for the rice, start chopping. When the water's boiling, add the rice and start counting my 20 minutes. Um, and basically by the time I've done the salad uh, and that's all done, then I'll start cooking. The rice should have less than 10 minutes to go. So then I'll start cooking the pork and then whenever everything's done, I'll just bring it all together. So. Right, so making the dressing. Um, I'll leave for a second because I want to uh, let just let the honey cool down again. So first what we'll do is chop everything because the salad doesn't get cooked. Uh, and again, oh, this is quite, normally I wouldn't wash this, but this is quite dirty. So I am going to give it a wash in also. You should always wash lettuce, but I, I don't like having wet lettuce in, a, in something that you're not cooking. Um, but in this case, it's come out so dirty. I think I'm going to have to. This is covered in dirt. Um, so I'm going to wash this and throw away the top, the top layers. Um, and that. soggy oh I should also yes um, I would always wash your hands I always try and remember to say this because um, before I start filming the last thing I've done is do is done some washing up so my hands are already clean from the washing up that I've done uh, immediately prior to this but uh, I try to remind people and also put on an apron uh, just keep your keep your clothes dry and free from splashes the other thing I've realized I need is a second bowl a small one to have the one serving the salad in because it says that the picture shows the salad sort of sprinkled on top but it says um, serve the salad alongside and eat everything together so I'm going to have it in a separate bowl and sort of see how that goes and there's also going to be lime zest in the rice which I haven't mentioned in my uh, various bits Right, so uh, we need to zest and half the lime. And um, before you, oh, again, I want to tip. I brought this up to talk to you, and now I need to tip it down again. This has got this has got a thing on it for moving it up and down, and it's so stiff. It everything else bends and swivels fine, but that it feels like I'm bending the thing and breaking it when I move it. Right there we go. There's a, a very good look at my chopping board. Right, so with lime. You always roll it just for a second or two, just to loosen it up for when you juice it. Um, and zest before juicing, much easier. Um, trying to zest a, a lime half is very difficult. So, zest the lime. Oh, one thing I mentioned, obviously I should uh, put this water on for the rice to boil. I'm just going to put it on low, because I don't necessarily need it to boil very fast. I don't need to start the rice at all soon. And I'll have the timer set to 10 minutes so that uh, when I put the rice on, I can uh, just immediately press the timer and then when 10 minutes go, I just take it off the heat. Although I do tend to watch it because um, with a gas stove, you've got a lot of control over your heat, but it, it start, the base starts very hot. So even on the lowest heat setting, it can start uh, start to boil too much and dry out and in that case I just take it off the heat for a few seconds um, or take it off a bit early. So zest the lime, so you've got all the zest off. And this this mixture of rice is a really easy way along with the salt of flavouring rice. It gives you a really nice nice fresh rice um, and don't forget there's some, some in the grater to, to scrape down into this tub and that tub's now just going to sit and wait. Um, until the rice is done at the end 
and I'll just wash this off now. It's uh, washing up as you go means you've got less to do either later on or tomorrow when it comes to clearing up. I would prefer to wash up as I go if I can. So that's the lime, so now we're going to juice the lime. So just chop in half. Um, and the ingredients, by the way, I'm going to read out now. Uh, water for the rice, 300ml. Jasmine rice, 150 grams. One baby gem lettuce, half a cucumber. Half of ginger, when ginger comes in random sizes. Um, I probably, it's, it's a 15 gram uh, sachet, and I'm probably going to put the entire sachet in. I don't think you can hurt it with too much ginger, to be brutally honest. Uh, garlic clove, one. Um, I am going to use at least three. Mint, one bunch. I'll probably use less because, like I say, I don't like mint and savoury things. Lime, a half. So that's how I'll use a half. I'll use an entire lime's worth of zest, but only half a lime's worth of juice. And I'll keep the other half of the lime, again, in a little tub in the fridge. And then if something happens later on, um, that I might need lime juice for, then I've got the lime available. Often the lime gets thrown away, but you know, it'll, keep, it'll keep for a good four or five days like that. Um, so it's useful to have around, just in case, rather than throwing away straight away. Uh, salted peanuts, 25 grams. Pork mince, 240 grams. Thai salt spice blend, one sachet, um, which doesn't say how much is in it, but it's probably... Um, somewhere between uh, two teaspoons and a tablespoon. Ketchup manis, one sachet, which is 25 grams. Soy sauce, one sachet, which is... Hard to read because the soy sauce is the same colour as the text. 25 mils. And honey, one sachet. It's cooled down now. 15 grams. So that's the amount. Cook the rice, prep the veg, fry the pork, add the spices and ginger and garlic to the pork and cook for two more minutes. Add the ketchup, marinate some water and glaze one minute. Make the dressing, which is uh, soy sauce, honey and lime juice. Make the salad, which is lettuce, cucumber and mint leaves. Uh, and then uh, after the rice is cooked, stir through the lime zest, have lime and pork together with the salad on the side. So there we go, juiced half the lime. And obviously this is the thing because uh, limes are all, well they're not necessarily uniform size but they're, you don't get massive ones so you can sort of, you're always fairly good on a half but sometimes you get a lime and it's just not juicy, it's just you get almost no juice out of it. Then you obviously use a, half, a whole lime's juice. You basically do everything to taste. So, and I, and I always put the, as you can see I'm scraping, I put the pulp from the lime uh, in with the juice as well. Like you do that and it catches the pips and you throw the pips away. But I put the pulp in, uh, just for extra flavour. bubbles but not big bubbles so I'm going to leave it. So the dressing is soy sauce, honey and lime juice. So I'll gather all of those things and put all the lime juice in. I could have done it in this tub honestly but uh, then I wouldn't have been able to, I still need to decant it into something to store it because there's not a, I don't have a lid for that, I've only got the juicer which obviously um, has holes in it. Soy sauce, because we're in soy sauce, we won't need to salt it because obviously soy sauce is already immensely salty. And there's your honey, and as you can see, it's now perfectly clear, not crystallised, not solid at all, so it will stir through much easier. 
So yeah, if you have crystallized honey, do that. If you've got like those squirty things of honey, which I do, um, sometimes you can, again, you can put them in a water drip, but it will take a lot longer to decrystallize. And usually it would only, you'll only get sort of like the top, but since you probably don't need the entire thing, you can do that, use it, and then keep doing it next time. You can also do it with jars, but you need to be much more careful with jars because uh, glass takes heat uh, very, very well, so you might hurt yourself. Um, and also my jars of honey are fancy honey, which I don't mind being... They're less crystallised in, in my case, actually. One, one of them was just a solid honey to start with, rather than a runny honey. There we go, put the honey into the dressing. Squeezy. Come on out. And I, I have a thing where I always get not upset or annoyed, but like if you're weighing something out or measuring something out, and then it's like this is 15 grams of honey, so you need 15 grams of honey, but you never get it all out of the packet. And likewise, when you're putting in a spoon of something that's wet, often, especially if it's like something slightly sticky like oil or very sticky like golden syrup. Some of it stays on the spoon. So I always feel like I, I don't know if I'm putting in the, enough or the rice band. And the thing is, I worry about this, but honestly, for most recipes, it doesn't matter. Like, it could only be a difference of a gram or two or a milliliter or two, and it totally doesn't make a difference. Right, so that's my dressing, for which I'll get some... Oh, not a good place for a tripod. I'll get out my uh, thin film to cover it. But that's obviously half will be kept and half uh, will be used. I'm gonna taste it. Mm. And that tastes reasonable. I think I possibly need to put clean film on my list on my shopping list as well. So 75 metres of clean film, so it's lasted I can't remember when I bought it, so it's lasted a long while. And obviously that really only needs square this big, but you can only take cling film off in lengths this long, so this is this is the size of cling film that I end up with. And I'm going to leave the spoon in there deliberately, so that I can stir it up, because otherwise the honey just sinks to the bottom. I said all that about cling film without you being able to see it, I think, so there we go. So cling film there. I've moved you back and now I can't get cling film back in the cupboard. There. Alright, so this can be washed up. I think it's now time to start the rice. My other thing is I'm always worried about missing something or missing a step or doing things in the wrong order. Um, and so I try to, as much as possible, have cooking only have one thing going on at a time. Um, and where it's, uh, and then where that's not possible. Like it have something you just like, something's cooking and when the timer goes, I stop that thing cooking. Uh, rather than having to try and be, be, oh, I'm cooking this and I need to know that I need to put something in two minutes, but also I'm trying to chop something. That's what. That's why I do the measuring out um, and everything in advance. But because, uh, like as I said, as I was doing that, I was just comparing. Oh, rice to do now, and then that's a completely different train of thought that interrupts my old train of thought. But yeah, the rice is ready to start cooking, so I put it in. With a spoon to make sure it's all covered by the water. Turn up just a smidge because um, putting something in water stops it, a large amount of stuff in water stops it boiling because obviously that thing's not not at boiling temperature, it cools the water down while the water tries to heat it up. So I'm going to turn the heat up just slightly to get it boiling. And as soon as I notice it boiling, uh, which will be like 30 seconds, then I'll knock the timer. Uh, to get ready for the pork, I need to uh, do the garlic, which in fact I have two large and two small cloves, all which are going to go in. So I'll have mine ready. And as I've said before, for garlic, you cut the you cut the rough end off uh, and take that away. And then to peel it, you can just this this bit's left flapping, so you can pull it up, or you just hold the tip and just sort of squeeze and pull, and all of the skin comes off. Well, nearly. 
um, and then you just grab the rest of it. And like I say, that as long as you've got some dexterity in your fingers, that's fine. Obviously, if you don't, there are gadgets that do it. There's like rolly things, um, and if you can't physically do that, then that's fine. But if if you if you can pinch, then um, the gadgets do not save you and do not save you any time when you mess. Because then you have to clean clean the gadget. You have to wash them out every time, and so then that's more washing up as well. So honestly, if you can, just use your hands. Right, that's boiling, so not the heat right back down again. And turn this timer. And then leave the garlic next to the garlic press ready. And then we, again, we chop off the end. Yeah, this is a different angle, but it's much further away. So I don't know this is better. I think one where I can have it on the counter is better. So actually, I think the smaller tripod is better, and this one may just be put away and only come out for special occasions. So. Oh, tweeze the end off and pull. So in that case, I've uh, seen it's failed. It's, it's uh, the ends popped off, but you still you can just you can just peel up. And again, it, things it is fiddly. It does stick to your fingers, but it's not like it's not time consuming. It's not the end of the world. If some skin does stay on. And it's not that I'm anti-gadget. I think a lot of gadgets are very helpful. And if anything gets you cooking and gets you get makes things makes it able for you to cook, then obviously that's the best. That's the most important thing. It's just I tend to find um, if I buy things for one purpose, they'll go it. They'll. This isn't talk, this is talking gadgets generally around the house, not just kitchen gadgets. I'll buy them. I'll use them once while it's novel, and then they'll go in a cupboard. And then the next time I come to do the thing where they'd be useful for. I just do it the old way without even thinking about it and then go, oh, I could have got the gadget out. Oh, but well, that would have been a hassle and I never use it. So it just ends up being um, a waste of money. Like I say, um, my one exception for this was because I cook with garlic a lot. Is a garlic press is useful um, as a case because it's just, it's like a knife. It's a thing that you use regularly to get something done. But like, I don't have a dedicated zester because you can just use the cheese grater. Um, I don't have a cherry stoner because the, I haven't cooked anything with cherries in it for mumble mumble years. So, yeah. If a gadget helps you cooking, that's grand. Um, but don't feel you have to spend money with them to get something done. Very much usually you can just, uh, like, a knife and the pots and pans are all that you need. Right, that's ready. Uh, I'm just watching the rice because it's uh, might because you need to keep the lid on, but it might start bubbling over. So I'm just going to pop it off the ring, just for two seconds to let it all sit back down, and pop it back on again, just to stop it bubbling over. Right now, it only needs half a cucumber. It says so. Hmm, I'll, I'll take slightly more than half. I think this half I'll put in a bag. This half I'll chop up. Um, what I will do is basically I'll have, I'm going to have two pots. I'm going to have uh, the, the, that for now and that for tomorrow. And I'm just going to chop it up. And the instructions for chopping the cucumber is trim the cucumber quarter length ways, uh, width ways into small pieces. So, and yeah, they're a reasonable size. I like cucumber, so I don't mind having uh, chunks of cucumber in it. So, chunks of cucumber. And if I'd been thinking about it, um, I could have done two and then two of those, like, because I managed to cut it quite evenly in half, so I could have done two strips and then two strips, and then I'd have got exactly half in each bowl. But uh, instead I'm doing all four at once, which means now I need to sort of split this into two halves. Um, and I can be very obsessive about this in that I'll, uh, instead of just grabbing and lumping, I will count sort of one, 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 one and um, pick roughly similar sized pieces of cucumber as I'm doing it so that they're um, much closer to exactly even. You do not need to do this. This is in fact a uh, almost a waste of time. I wish I didn't have such a compulsion to do this, but uh, this is how I feel about things and this is how I cook. You can do things much more easily and pleasantly for yourself. Yes, yeah, because I keep looking through to see where I'm throwing not just a piece each time, so there's the same number of pieces, but roughly the same sized pieces as well. I have autism, by the way. Uh, this may have been apparent. Just that. Just that. Right. Okay, so, so that's that. Um, to move this again now to get the bag out to put the uh, cucumber in. The 
midst all getting used up, the letters um, going to be um, taking the top bits off anyway. Right, that goes in the cupboard. And cucumber is a useful thing to actually have because I can put that on a sandwich with some cheese or with some tomatoes or just with vinegar. Cucumber sandwich is very nice. So now I'm actually going to take off the top layers of leaves because I don't want them because... Um, God, this lettuce is filthy. Like, they're not normally this dirty. This is disgusting. And it's got dirt on my chopping board now. So I'm not going to... Because I've washed this already and it's still, still dirty. I'm opening it to try and get all the dirt off. The dirt just packed Um, I also find this white bit. This is the. This I know. This is the bit a lot of people like. This sort of white bit at the end, where it's like less so the leaf, where it's nice and crunchy. I don't like that. I find it flavourless. I'm going to chuck this away as well, and then I'm going to chop this. We've got more of the leaf. And just thin slicing, and this is basically the, the that tiny core is the best part. Of this. I don't like lettuce very much, and I also find it a bit pointless as a as a food stuff. So. Lettuce goes again, there's been split between them. So I, I don't care that I don't put much lettuce on this. And I will use some of these leaves, but some of them are just. Uh, just throwing away some of the bigger ones. It's just it's so filthy, it's, just, it's like it's got. It's like it's been rubbed into it. And like I say, they're all wet as well. I don't want it to be wet. Again, I don't like that bit very much. And this is the thing about cooking as well. Cook, you, you can say, oh, put in a lettuce. And you're like, actually, I don't like lettuce very much, so I'm not going to put in very much. Or, actually, I don't like lettuce at all, so I'm not going to put it in. Like, it is the... Uh, you can adjust recipes to your liking. I mean, there's, there comes a point where it's like, there's no point in doing a recipe if you're going to cut out half of the ingredients or you're not going to, like, you might as well cook something else because you're, you're not going to get any flavour. But um, substitute ingredients for ingredients you like or uh, you, use small amounts of things you don't like and extra things you do. Just makes cooking much nicer. Makes, or makes eating much nicer. The cooking is largely indifferent. All right, there we go. made the chopping board all wet now. Things will get stuck to it. So now I'm just do the mint. And it, it, it's called for whole mint leaves. I do not want whole mint leaves. Also this has been under something in the fridge and it's got squidged so these leaves aren't some of these leaves aren't good so I'm gonna throw the squidged ones away. Um, but just in general I don't want whole mint leaves. I don't I'm okay with mint as a flavouring for things, but mint leaves just are just a bit too strong for me. And like I say, I'm not a fan, the biggest fan of mint in savoury things anyway. So um, I'm probably going to just use this many leaves. And you put them off the stalks, you don't eat mint stalks because they're very tough. Um, and the rest of that can stay in the bag, and I'll probably put that in the fridge as well, just in case. Although I imagine what I'll do with it is throw it away in a week's time because I don't like it very much. But I just I don't like wasting food either so I, I won't throw it away now in case I do have a use for it. Because that will um, mean I don't have to buy extra. So chop through, do the for, for chopping I find that this isn't how professional chefs do it, but basically I keep the knives point in one place and rock it up and down but rock it across and sort of the point roughly where it is. And like I said, that calls for whole mint leaves. I'm not having whole mint leaves. 
Um, and this one I'm much less fussy about splitting exactly in half, so half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. Um, and I can see there's 10 seconds left on the right, and I can see now it's stopped making any kind of steam at all, so the water's all gone. So I'm just going to turn the heat off and remove it off the heat. And that's done. And another 10 minutes for it to be done, but like I say, I'm not going to time that um, because I know the pork will take about 10 minutes. So it will definitely have had long enough by the time I finish cooking the pork because I still want two things to do here. So tub that up into the fridge. That's all I'm ready for tomorrow. The mince. Uh, Normally I put in a bag, I, I, I can't um, be bothered to fiddle with the cupboard now because the tripod, so I'll just roll that up. Put there, that should be fine. And then the very last thing I need to do, or the very two last things I need to do, the peanuts, these will need chopping. I'm just, I'm just going to read the instructions again to make sure I haven't missed anything. So, uh, boil the water for the rice with salt, add water, boil for 10 minutes, uh, leave covered for another 10 minutes. Uh, trim the baby gem, baby gem lettuce, trim half, then it's sliced, trim cucumber, uh, chop into small pieces, pick and grate ginger, didn't need to do, pick and grate the garlic, the garlic is peeled, I haven't crushed it yet. Um, mint leaves, and I've chopped, zest and half the lime, roughly chopped cumin, which is about what I'm about to do. The dressing is made, soy sauce, honey, and juice from the lime in a bowl. Salad is uh, lettuce, cucumber, and mint leaves. And I will add the dressing, um, and that will be ready to go. Um, and I also need to mix, but I can use this. I also need to mix and add the dressing, but I will do that um, just before I serve. So then the last thing I need to do after chopping the peanuts is uh, oil in a pan on a high heat. Add the pork for five minutes in small pieces. Um, add the Thai spice blend, ginger, garlic for two more minutes. Ketchup manis with water for one more minute. And then it will be done. So I'm also going to take the take the tops off these with the, the ready in advance. Leaving them propped up. This is the one I don't want to fall over because it's running. So. Yeah, it's got an anise almost licorice flavour, which I really, really like. Well, I do know some people find off putting. Clean okay. this up. Again, ideally to be dry. This is again why I don't like wash, washing vegetables to track water. Right, there we go. And this is cut in much the same way, honestly, as you cut, um, as, as you chop the herbs, you sort of rock through them. And you'll need to do it sort of a couple of times. And if you do it with a bigger knife, um, it can be easier, but uh, I don't want to dirty two knives. And it can also be harder if you can't control it as well, so swing them around that's really. And basically this is roughly chopping because they're going to be on the top and they're adding um, flavor, a salty flavour, a salty peanut flavor. And this thing, I don't like peanuts on their own, but I love peanut butter and then I, I really like them on top of various Asian dishes, so I don't know what it is that they're possibly just, they're better combined with things. Because like I say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat sit and eat peanuts on their own, even if they've already been roasted and salted. But anyway, because they're on top for not just flavour but crunch, you want them to be, like, you want some fairly chunky pieces. So there we go. So now this goes into a tub just basically so that I can store them easier. Because I'm going to sprinkle over half on top of the, cook the ones I cooked today. 
and uh, half is ready. Uh, and it's got, annoyingly, it's got bits of mint in it. Uh, you, you can like, none of which will hurt it, but you can like wash your chopping board properly in order to prevent that. But again, I cannot be bothered. Another good tip for cooking is if something seems like a hassle and it's not a safety issue, it doesn't matter if you skip it. So that's ready, and that's going to be standing by. And I'm also going to chuck on now the, the uh, heat for my, for my plates. That's going to be all ready to go. And then the one last thing I need to do is I need to open up this pork. Um, and again, it's one of those things where it says break it up in the pan, but I find chucking in a lump of uh, mince and then getting it to separate is much harder than if you just um, break it up to start off with. So you take the lump and you just basically pull off small pieces and just essentially shred it so that when it cooks it's uh, already broken up into smallish pieces. And you can chop it further as you cook. Yeah, and the amount of time it's taken to do all of this as well. This is going. The rice is going to be well finished, so I'll just um, finish it off with the lime once I've got uh, once we're nearly done. And this pork, and we're not going to need to add salt or pepper because we've got the Thai spice blend has, I assume, peppers in it, um, and the ketchup manis has plenty salting. So, just keep going, just keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, and there we go, that's all broken up, ready to go. And now I've touched raw meat, so I'm going to wash my hands. line that up to make you see into the pan better. I think that's I think that's really fairly reasonable. There we go. That's actually pretty good. Um, so it needs a dash of oil. I'm never sure how much to use, and I always I think end up using too much, but uh, never mind. And Oh, this is going to be slightly awkward because I've got to reach because the knob is this side, the ignition switch is this side, so I'm going to straddle the camera. And of course, once it's lit, it's fine. But I just need to. There we go. And it says a high heat, so for me that's uh, actually quite far up on the, quite far, not very far up on the knob. That's about midway on the mid knob. There, and I'm just going to get my port ready to go in. Now, but I also don't. Oh, there they are, they're covering each other. 
Alright, so got my stirrers ready. I can feel the pan is at a high heat. So, add the pork mince. And because I'm just holding the edges of the packet, I won't need to wash my hands again. So I'm just to soak everything in. That packet goes away. Start the timer. And just immediately start stirring. And it does start to stick back together again, but because you've already uh, separated it, it does have, it, it is much easier to move about. So uh, that chopping board can now go in the wash. I won't wash it now because um, I need to keep an eye on the pork. Yeah, there's now no longer time to wash up as I go, so everything else has to be washed up afterwards. So uh, just keep poking the pork. And as a reminder, the next things I need to add are the tight spice blend, ginger, and garlic. And then we'll be adding in a few more time. And again, this is the sort of thing where there's not enough time to really do anything else, um, but they're all, you also don't need to be stirring it constantly. So you just need to poke it uh, and keep an eye on it. So, yeah, this is one of the ones where it would technically be the boring bit of cooking. It would be the, one, the bit where I'm very glad to have the music or I'm very glad to have the, uh, have, have the TV on. And you're also supposed to drain this afterwards, and I always find that a real hassle to try and pour it out without pouring the meat into the sink. So usually I don't bother to drain things unless it really needs to be dry. You can see there is a lot of, uh, a lot of water coming out of the pork. But at the same time, you can sort of, uh, at a high heat, you can sort of fry it off rather than uh, needing to pour it because I just, I find pouring it's uh, incredibly difficult to do. So yeah, we're on the... Basically, once I've um, put in the garlic and the spices and the ginger, then I will put the lime in my rice, which is just uh, waiting over here, and dress my salad. And then everything will be ready to go in the bowls. So yeah, we've got another two minutes thirty of the occasional stirring and poking. I mean, just you break that bone as you go, just squish, squish. And ideally you'll want it a bit brown, but I think it's not going to do that because I think so much water has come off and I'm not going to drain that. And I'm, I am keeping it in quite a high heat. And basically, um, it stays at this heat until the very end where you add the ketchup and the water and it's this simmer, and then you obviously drop it, drop down the heat. I say water can have Some of it's pork fat as well, some of it is fat, but some of it is water. <laughs> and I think I can also do in advance. I'm going to take my juice into the living room ready because it's hard to carry a with a standing bottle of juice and a juice in the pot. So this is the sort of thing where you could also put the telly on ready or whatever it is to do. So it's fine, so again, I just move everything around the pan. And you can see it's starting to brown, which is nice. Yeah, sorry, I'm not in a, I'm not in a chatty mood today, don't have any anecdotes. Oh, I did watch Doll's House. Oh, I don't have time to tell you about it properly now. No, it was, um, it was interesting, because they'd done, it was, I hadn't realised, they basically they had done an, adapt, an adaption of it, where it's split, split over three time periods, where you're seeing... Nora from 1918, Nora from 1968, and Nora from 2018. Except the story doesn't change, so I'm not sure what the point was. 
Um, I have more thoughts, but I don't have time to tell you them, so I'll try and remember to say that next time I'm cooking something. All this is now going properly brown, this is good. But so, yes, it wasn't terrible, um, but I, 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 I don't see what was the advantage except for making more parts because it was a student, not, it was a production for students. It wasn't written again. The students didn't come up with this, they were just doing it. It's, uh, okay, so two minutes. So, uh, garlic. I'm just going to pull off the heat as I do this. Just stop the garlic burning. Yes, I've, I've been plenty of garlic. Plenty of garlic. And again, that's going to go in the sink, but uh, I've not had time to be uh, washed and sprinkled over this. The thing I care about is not to sprinkle stuff onto the back of the spatula because otherwise uh, it doesn't go into the. doesn't go properly into the uh, mix, so that's in. And two minutes, and he's that very thorough stir. So the pork gets all nicely covered in the spices and the ginger and the garlic. And that's going to be two minutes. I'm going to shove this uh, garlic press into the sink. So move my tray around here. So I've got the, uh, the saucepan, as you can see by the steam, the rice is still plenty hot. Tip in all of the uh, lime zest. You could add other seasonings, obviously. This is, the, this is the one called for by the recipe. You could add more salt or pepper here. Um, totally cut it well. So uh, stir through the lime zest. All the rice is nicely coated. And that goes in the same as well. All the stuff is a spit. So I'm just going to turn it down slightly. And get another coat. And it's all nice and brown. And then what I'm going to do I'm going to pull out my hot bowl and start dishing up the rice. And how this goes is it will be a spoonful of rice, a spoonful of rice. One last minute, which is the ketchup manis and a splash of water. So pour this in all over. All oh, this stuff is so lovely. Like I say, I did just flick the heat right down because the pork was starting to spit to the extent of uh, throwing the pork out of the bowl. And yeah, get as much of this out of the packet as you can by whatever squeezing methods. Now just a tiny splash of water because the uh, because the uh, pork had so much fat and water come off it, and then mix everything up while increasing the heat so that it sizzles, and that's one minute. And um, once that one minute's up, that's done. And I haven't eaten it in the end. That lid's going back in the drawer. Oh, and I need to turn off the oven. Stir that again to get the proper glaze going. Yes, that was about the right amount of water, you can see, because it's uh, making sure the pork is all nice and covered in gloss over and shining. And then we've got a spoon of rice in each bowl. So there's another spoon that goes here. 
Yeah, if you're having it with a, with a large portion of meat and salad, then 150 grams of rice or drinking of water is about the right amount for two people. Um, but as you can see, it's not a massive amount of rice, so if it's, um, if it's more rice with a bit of sauce that you're having, okay, and the pan's going, so I turn the heat off and move the pan completely off the heat. Um, yeah, if it's more uh, rice with a bit of uh, sauce that you're having, you'll want a bit more rice. So, put that in there. sticking to it which then you need to soak them for ages to get them to come off whereas doing this just prevents them sticking in the first place so you can just wash them up when you come to them you don't need to uh, you don't need to then pre-soak them to get them to to get the soap to budge One, one more stir, and then scrape them off. And then, yes, yeah, split the pork between the rice. And this definitely will lead the salads to be, to be, um, filling, because that's not actually that much uh, pork, so turn the fan off. And have pork. And then scrape off the last bits of the pan juices, just to again soak through the rice. But this will stay on a cold hob to cool down naturally rather than being shocked. Right, and then you've got to add half of this. There's a top it, crunchy topping. That's about half. And because I'm going to heat that up in the microwave, I won't cover it. Um, and because it would put, put, put putting the things in there, we'll just make them go soggy overnight. So I'm just going to keep those on the side, ready for when I next make the dish. And I just need to not forget to do that. All of this stuff can go in the bin. Oh, I didn't mean to empty the bin, so uh, that should be a thing to do after I've eaten. This lid goes in the wash as well. And now I add Now I add the dressing to the salad. So this a stir and spoon half the dressing over. One, two, three spoonfuls, and then stir up the salad as well so that the uh, dressing covers it and so that uh, the mint is mixed through the cucumber and the lettuce. Looks like enough dressing. So yeah, I'll cover that dressing. Um, and in this particular case, it doesn't matter whether you keep the dressing in the fridge or not. Um, I think because I'm going to use it tomorrow. I'm going to put it in the fridge. 
um, but it wouldn't match if it didn't. There's some dressings where if you use oil, because they use oil, they go hard if you put them in the fridge, so leave them out. But anyway, there's my pork, there's my salad. Um, I'm going to go eat them now, so uh, bon appetit. Right, meal all eaten, and um, the rice was as good as rice always is. Um, the pork was very nice, quite spicy, um, and a good, good, good stickiness. And I did like the addition of the peanuts. The salad, um, as I thought, the mint did not do very much for me, um, and the lettuce, you know, it bulked it out, but it might as well not have been there. Um, the cucumber was nice, and it did because you're supposed to try and eat the salad with the pork the uh the cucumber did sort of cool the pork down nicely and the dressing was very good as well um so i think rather than having it as a separate salad and rather than having the mint and lettuce what i would do in future would be to have um basically have the rice the pork the peanuts and then scatter over the cucumber and drizzle over the dressing and just have it all in one bowl rather than a separate bowl and of the salad just have the cucumber and the dressing not um not the mint and the lettuce so uh that's all right but uh, otherwise uh probably won't bother cooking it again bit of a faff for as i say for something that was good but not uh brilliant definitely three out of four stars so um enjoyable it wasn't that filling in the end i could have done with a bit more rice a bit more pork because i don't find salad massively massively filling um oh, like i said again the cucumber was all right so um yeah three stars pretty nice uh worth a try if it's the sort of thing that you're into if the, if, if you look at those ingredients and went oh that sounds yummy um it's a good version of that dish i've got no idea if it's anything like the real thai food um but uh as uh, as an anglicized version made palatable for white people then i think it was pretty decent so uh that was really good and i'll talk to you again sometime soon goodbye